Oh, no question. It's a huge win for Trump. How on earth could a judge who made it through law school think that Donald Trump can take the property of the government, the federal government, take it home and then have to have a special master decide whether they can investigate him? Because she's biased and corrupt. Like, I don't know what to tell everybody anymore. Like, I've, I've been saying this since he took office. When you allow Republicans to control the courts, you get nothing. Trump judges do not believe in the rule of law. They do not believe in precedent. They do not believe in facts. They do not believe in logic. They just believe in whatever is going to help Donald Trump. And they've proven it again and again and again. So when I say that you cannot trust Trump, Trump judges, I don't know what more evidence you need for that fact, right? Like, look, the, the argument that he has executive privilege is so what the scientists would call stupid that, it, that, it, that it's difficult to explain it, right? Like the idea that, first of all, privilege goes to the current president. We only have one president at a time. So it's not Trump's privilege to, to have. Andrew, the judge makes note here in this filing of the unprecedented nature of this search and the stigma that Trump faces. What stands out to you in the judge's order? Well, in the part that you've just referred to, Brianna, what stands out to me is a lot about this order seems like it could, there's not another litigant in the United States of America who could have gotten this same ruling. It seems very tailored to and uh, particularly considerate of the former president's uh, uh, position and status and his, you know, his media role. I was really remarkable to me. It's clear that the judge did not trust the government's filter uh, process review. She she indicated in the arguments that she had some concerns about that. Here she says that um, there are reasons to believe uh, the concerns as to the efficacy of the government's process and the and the elements that she cites as, as causing irreparable harm uh, potentially to uh, former President Trump are also things that undercut, I think, the government's um, uh, legitimacy and effectiveness in this case so far. So it's really a very pro um, plaintiff pro-Trump uh, ruling in all respects. It could both be a big, big practical problem, but also could kind of uh, undermine the entire prosecution. What the judge did here is so out of the norm, um, her discussion of the facts and her tethering of this to the law would just it would bear, it bore no resemblance to what happens every single day in federal and state investigations. No one else would be treated this way. Um, and what's the harm other than it is opening the door to every defendant is going to now ask for this, which is nobody wants to have a fast investigation. Everyone's going to want to delay an investigation. And any good defense lawyer is going to glom on to this decision and say, you know what, I want a special master appointed to review any document at all that I have an interest in. It doesn't work that way. You you do have an opportunity to do that if you get indicted. And it really isn't going to be a question of a couple of weeks. It is unheard of for an Article Three judge to enjoin a criminal investigation. Unheard of to do that. Um, and here, with the defense, Donald Trump's defense now knowing that it can delay things, it's not just a question of appointing somebody and that special master will do their own independent review. Uh, the defense is going to keep raising issues and wanting to litigate and take them to the special master and then take them to the district court judge and then take them to the 11th Circuit. This really could open the door to months of litigation. Um, and the precedent, as I said, is horrendous because no other defendant or putative defendant is given this kind of right. You know, you really can't read what the judge did here and have any confidence that she's going to be reasonable in the way that the special master process is going to work because the decision is, I mean, frankly, is just so off the wall, both in its legal analysis and even its recitation of the facts, it's not even handed. So I can see people at the department probably being very skeptical that this won't open the door to really inordinate delay.
So, Andrew, Judge Cannon will make the appointment of this special master. This is not an area that any of us has covered or our viewers have really been familiar with over the years. So what kind of person is a special master? Is it an attorney? Is it a, is it a credible person? Is it somebody with experience? Or can they work with the Trump team and throw, put the My Pillow guy in or Rudy Giuliani or someone like that? That's another great question. So this now has to be somebody who both sides, according to the court, both sides agree on. I'm not sure that's going to happen. It should be somebody who's got top secret clearance because the judge has allowed review of executive privilege documents, which is, un again, unheard of, and it makes no sense because if there are executive privilege documents, it means that the documents belong to the archives, not to Donald Trump. Um, and it's presumably somebody who has done this in the past. So, look, the ideal person would be a former judge uh, who doesn't really show strong partisan leanings one way or the other. Uh, that's It's possible, but I think there's going to be a dispute over that issue um, of who's actually going to be the special master, which itself can cause delay. And if the person doesn't have clearance, that also is something that takes at least some time, although it can be expedited. That also is not something that happens overnight. Remember, the whole point here is to delay, right? So she, so guess who gets to appoint the special master? She does, right? So that takes a lot of time for however, however long she wants to wait. Or the Department of Justice can appeal. But if they appeal, they appeal to the 11th Circuit, which is controlled by Republicans. So the 11th Circuit could then wait on that appeal for a long time. But even if the 11th Circuit like goes super quick, right, they could appeal that to the Supreme Court, which, as we already know, infected by Trump judges, and they could delay and delay and delay. And the whole idea here is not to get him off because they can't because he's guilty, but it's to, it's to delay it to the point where they can get to another election, remove uh, uh, the, depart the current Department of Justice, get a pro-Trump, perhaps Trump himself, back in the White House. That's their game plan. And Eileen Cannon, Trump Judge Eileen Cannon, is playing right into that game plan. Oh, no question. It's a huge win for Trump for primarily two reasons, right? Um, his strategy here, so strategically, his strategy is to play for delay. And he gets that either with the appointment of the special master or potentially an even much larger delay if the government de decides to appeal this ruling. And secondly, from just a person, you know, public relations perspective, winning a motion against the government puts Donald Trump in a very positive position. It, it enables him to continue this narrative that he is the kind of wounded, aggrieved party here and that he's fighting back against the government that's done something wrong. Um, and I think that's a, that's a message that resonates very deeply with his audience. So this is a good day for Team Trump.